<laughs> yeah, that wasn't near as bad as I was expecting. I thought oh, I'd no. be doing something embarrassing. So <laughs> <laughs> They cut all the embarrassing parts out. Thank goodness for that. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I'm Lex. I'm Katie. And uh, we're going to do the deep freeze today. So um, why don't we just jump in? Sure. All right. All right. So we've got here our deep freeze console, Pickle Rick. Okay, quick question. Deep freeze, what basically, you know, yeah, in a so nutshell? Deep freeze keeps your machines in a, consi a consistent state. We used it at my last job for our library's public internet labs to keep the patrons from saving anything, making any changes, or otherwise destroying the computers. You reboot, deep freeze sets it back to your initial configuration, and you're good to go. All right. Okay, so sorry I interrupted you. Let's take it from there, yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, everything that we're going to talk about uh, has to do with the deep freeze enterprise grade licensing. So if you've got a lower grade license, I'm not sure how much of this will work for you. It'll be a surprise. So we've got here four machines in the deep freeze enterprise console. The icons are a wee bit different. These two are seeds and these two have full on deep freeze installed, the whole enchilada. So Okay, so what's a seed then? You've got as far as install files to get deep freeze installed on all of your target machines, you've got a seed which is like the very basic functionality of deep freeze that allows your machines to communicate with the deep freeze console okay. on the server. From there you can do So you gotta plant the seed. Yep, plant oh. the seed. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> then they show up in the console, okay. and then you can grow deep freeze. Okay, so uh, when you do the install, is there anything we need to remember? Or, uh, oh, that's a great point. You were you were mentioning to me because I was like clicking through things. Let's install this. Yeah, so we got it installed here on a pickle rig. Part of the install process after you hit the next, next, next several times is to set up a customization code. It warns you. But if you fail to read the message, like I did the first time I set this up, you can't get your customization code back. You just have to nuke it and start over. Then Nobody can get it back for you. It's gone. That's forever. a tip, guys. So don't be blasting through there without do reading, okay? Yeah, so All right. here we go. The seed allows these two to communicate with the, the deep freeze console. It gives me all of these options as long as they're online and connected. Uh, I can reboot them. I can shut them down. I can wake on LAN if they, you know, get shut down for whatever reason. Uh, what I'm going to do later is push a deep freeze install to them. Okay. Presumably, you can use the deep freeze MSI packager to deploy this to all your machines. Okay. It's a little bit tricky because the machine goes down for a reboot, and I haven't found any way of preventing a reboot from this MSI. From this, yeah. So. You can feed it a seed or an install file. I fed it a seed that I created uh, yesterday, and then tell it a folder to dump it out in. Convert to MSI. So success. With that being an MSI, can you deploy that? Yeah. Okay. I deployed it to my machines, but they froze, and then I got impatient and I killed the deployment. So. So, so a little patience goes a ways. Possibly. Okay. All right. Good to know. Yeah. So you get your MSI installed. Presumably, you can deploy this out. So you don't have to go visit each of your machines and install, because who wants to do that? Yeah. We'll close that guy. So Chris just threw up a, uh, or threw on the chat, a deep freeze article, f or a uh, blog post from PDQ. Sweet. We'll get that in the bonus content. Perfect. Nice. Thanks, Chris. All right. So console Back on track. Yeah, running. I'll remember what I was We're doing. We're going to do an install on a machine? Yeah. Okay. So. For, before you do an install, you've got to create a configuration file and an ah, install file. Okay. So we're going to use the other deep freeze program, the deep freeze administrator. I have opened an existing config file that I created yesterday. So what you're going to do, you're going to set a password, and you notice how these passwords are. I learned how to do things. There these are go. in plain text. Mm -hmm. They'll always be in plain text. So don't set your domain admin password. Oh, yeah, don't set the Or name. any other password that you like and want to keep private. Okay. Just I, don't be showing people this. Yeah, so. don't show people this unless you want them to see the passwords. Yeah, if you have, like, student labs or, you know, like I had patrons, mm -hmm. maybe don't let them see this. Okay. So once you get that set, then what? So you can select which drives to thaw. We had a pretty simple system with just a C drive, so we didn't do a whole lot. Here... Um, we have tasks, 
You can create a variety of interesting tasks. You can tell it to restart or shut down mm -hmm. on a schedule. So I also noticed, uh, maybe I'm jumping ahead, you can also set up Windows updates scheduling in there. Correct. Uh, am I jumping ahead or can we? No, that's what I was getting to. These okay. ones are just less. Ah, okay. Less complicated, less interesting, I suppose. All right. You can show a message. This applies to the Windows Updates one. We'll go ahead and edit the one that I created yesterday. So people ask a lot. It's like, you know. <laughs> Everybody's favorite, Windows Updates. Windows Updates, how do I take care of that with Deep Freeze? And so this is how you yeah. should do it. Let Deep Freeze take care it's of it. It's especially critical with this because if you don't, if you let Windows take care of it on, that, uh, on the end of the Windows side, uh, it'll continue to roll back to its original state, its original frozen It's true. State, right? it's, if you, you can run into a situation, and I notice this quite a lot, where the updates are not finished installing, but Deep Freeze goes ahead, goes ahead and freezes the machine back to a nice locked state for you in the middle of the Windows update. So it just continually applies the update, reboots, applies the update, reboots over and over again until you yeah, take control and patched. fix it. Without yeah. Deep Freeze. So in other words, schedule it here and let Deep Freeze take care of the the yeah. Windows updates for your Deep Freeze machines. Any issues that I had with Windows updates, if I let Deep Freeze babysit the entire thing totally from start to finish, it did a lot better job than leaving anything to chance. <coughs> so you can shut down after the task. Deep Freeze, uh, if I understand it correctly, does some monitoring in Windows to see when the updates are finished and uses, I think, scheduled tasks or something sneaky to watch when the Windows, are up Windows updates are done and then shuts down when it thinks it's done. Most of the time it's pretty good. So you definitely want this set in your config file before you push it out? Yep. Okay. If you want, unless you have updates disabled from some group policy or some other thing in your machines. Unless okay. you don't want updates for some reason, yeah. which, well, you know, don't. Uh, <laughs> don't. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't. you want to leave all the things enabled by not updating and get stuff like WannaCry on your network. Yay. Oh. Yay. Okay. So the other thing that you can do in conjunction with Windows updates that you need to configure is allow Deep Freeze to babysit for you. It's going to set up a 10 gigabyte thaw space, which seems like a lot, but it's definitely worth it. Um, back so last, it was last fall sometime when Creator's update was mm -hmm. released. Uh, Deep Freeze had put out an article saying, hey guys, we support Windows 10, use us on your Windows 10 machines. And then Creator's update 1607 was released and broke a bunch of stuff. It, they changed a bunch of drivers and I think there's a great big long blog post from Deep Freeze about what was broken and what they fixed. So uh, version 8.35 is the one that actually fully supports Windows 10. Excellent. And that cache allows it to download the yeah. updates so when it Deep wound Freeze... Up, one of the problems was that the it was a 5 gigabyte thaw mm -hmm. space and it just wasn't large enough wasn't to hold all of the updates because they're about a gig a piece. Yeah. It's very massive. large. Okay. So and then you can direct it at uh, you know, the internet for its updates, or you can specify a WSUS server if you've got one. You can send out batch files. I don't have anything too fancy with batch files, but they're fun. Look at them. Test them. <laughs> it's fancy if that was Chris, huh? It'd be fancy. They don't, they're not that fancy. They don't do PowerShell. Micro fancy. <laughs> Micro fancy. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, you can run it in stealth mode, whether or not you allow your users to see that it's there, enabled or disabled. I never showed them that because they were patrons. Yeah. And then another one, another setting that's pretty handy is restart on log off. If you have public use machines and they get logged off all the time, they get reset to a... Mm -hmm. They get reset every uh, time. Every time that somebody logs out, so... So the example you were telling me yesterday, you do your taxes online, you happen uh -huh. to leave it on yeah. the desktop. And then I just walk away off. and leave them on that public computer. Yeah, log Let off. Deep freeze it's up. gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is there anything else? Or is that the config file set up? Oh, that's the pretty much the config file set up. Okay. We're going to save it. New config in my folder on my desktop. Oh, I want to pull that back. Come back here. You can get to that configuration administrator through the start menu or through the application if you've got the Deep Freeze console open. Configuration administrator. Here you are. Desktop folder, new config we created today. You have the option to create a seed. I've already got a seed created, so I'm not going to create another one, mm -hmm. which we talked about seeds. Yeah. It lets you grow Deep Freeze. Or the full on install program, which will put the seed there and then install Deep Freeze for you. 
So I'm going to put this install program, webcast install file. So if you do them both together, it's just a little more efficient, I guess. I mean, I'm yeah. trying to figure out why you would you have, seed something without doing an install? If you want to do a seed install, you could push that out maybe with deploy. Okay. And then if you've got a bunch of different machines that you need to push different config files, you could select them in the deep freeze. Like you could select your this lab and accounting, push it its config um, file different. and then yeah okay. accounting you could so push just get the seed out and then you can push the different configs out okay yeah. well, that makes sense so it's a slightly more efficient webcast install file save it always takes a second let it think hmm do we have a question sandwich. yeah we can take a question cool Dear Lex and Katie, what is the best way to manage frozen PCs and Windows updates? It seems that sometimes the thaw for Windows update locks up and doesn't finish if the PCs go back to sleep while in the middle of that thaw for updates period. Thanks in advance, Valerie B. That is interesting. I've never hmm. seen it go to sleep in the middle of a Windows update, but I can see how it would where they're taking like, yeah, I guess to install. Maybe GPO change it so it doesn't go to sleep? I mean, I... I don't like my machines ever going to sleep, personally. Yeah, me neither. So let's... Well, if you know, have to let them go to sleep, I'd, I'd maybe watch them and see what they're doing if they're going into hibernate. That'd be... Yeah. I've never tried Chris, that any thoughts? Not really. I have very little experience with the deep freeze, uh, but just know that newer versions of Windows that hibernate, they have that hybrid sleep that they do and hybrid stuff, so it may or may not have to do with that. So... Don't know. GPO Check your power that, control turn it settings. Off, yeah. yeah. Maybe actually force it to sleep rather than the hybrid sleep. I don't mm. know. That's me completely rambling. So, mm. yeah. And other than that, check all the. Make sure Deep Freeze is the one watching the Windows updates and is pointed at the right source. Yeah. WSUS or anywhere else. Okay. Yay! It succeeded. Well, what, you acted surprised. <laughs> just <like. laughs> oh, just it happy it worked. succeeded. Woohoo! Something minutes. worked. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that. so we're gonna send that out to Tiny Rick. So I notice all uh, our machines are Ricks. We got Drunk Rick, Evil Rick, Simple Rick, Tiny Rick. It's true. All different characters from Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. I mean, they're the same guy, but different variations hmm. sometimes. Alter par parallel universes. Parallel universes and altered states. Altered in the case of Drunk Alter Rick. <laughs> altered state. Yeah, that is. I guess. Well, they are kind of altered states. And also Pickle, Pickle Rick as well. Yeah. And Tiny Rick. Pickle Rick. Is it Tiny uh, Rick and Tiny, altered yeah. state. I think the only one that's actually different is Evil Rick. Hmm. It's the only. I think we have a toxic Rick, too. Hmm. We do. I created way too many Ricks. Did you? We have a lot of was Ricks. That, that was your doing, Chris? Uh, yeah. Uh, he's, he's we so even have a of council it. of Ricks. <laughs> <laughs> and a Plumbus, just thrown in for it. Okay, so for these guys, I'm going to tell, tell the Deep Freeze console to install. I hope these jokes aren't too inside. I hope some of you are watching Rick and Morty. But you know, if I, not, check I'm it out. It's an around. awesome show. Mm, I don't know. Okay, so it, w it warns you to look for the right deep freeze install file. If you feed it a seed or a config file, it'll just whine and complain and so the nothing good one. will happen. So I've always named mine obvious things install file and seed so that I don't get confused. Mm, good to know. All right, so there's my install file open, and it's working on things. It's off to the races. Think Tiny Rick's here. He'll go away in a second and then come back eventually. Okay, so now install is going to run, and we can sit here and watch it, but we're not that fun to watch. So no. what's next while that's running? Let's. So also keep in mind with those, if you install the seed mm -hmm. or the full install file, it will do a reboot. There's really nothing that you can do with that. It's so if you have people using reboot. the machine and you decide to deploy it remotely, it's going to reboot whether they want to or not, and nice. you can't cancel that. Launch that one in the middle of the day, people. Yeah, 9.30 in the morning when the accounting department rolls in. As soon as the accounting gets in, yep, do that one. Okay. All right. So what else? Do you want to show us while that's running? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So deploy an inventory. Inventory. Uh, just so you guys know, in inventory, we do, uh, we are able to uh, pick up whether or not deep freeze in the deep freeze states on the machines. So, <laughs> excuse me. This morning I built a collection there: drunk Rick, tiny Rick, simple Rick, and evil Rick. These are the one. That's the one that's in a frozen state. There's one that's seeded and thawed. And again, just to take a look at this, uh, if you go to computer table, deep freeze. You go in the deep freeze status and contains, and I put in seed. So that's how you can tell the ones that are seeded. Again, frozen and thawed. Pretty easy, and you can I guess deploy to those if you need to. Yeah. 
I guess Did you so, mention yesterday that you can look for machines that don't have a deep freeze state? You can. I didn't build a thing, so I guess all I do is say, you know, look for anything that doesn't have frozen thought or, yep. and then there's no deep freeze state at that point, so. Just not, not all. Instead not of all. does right. not contain. Negate that, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I guess if we have the time, should I show the deploy yeah, portion sure. of this? So, uh, I built a deep freeze nested package. So, if you were going to, you know, freeze things and you wanted to deploy a bunch of uh, applications to it, you need to thaw it first. And so, if you've got the enterprise version of deep freeze, you can actually run some command line. Um, I've got, uh, if you go out, I think it's in the uh, bonus content, there's a link to where you can go grab the command line. Uh, it's a five-page PDF. Here's the errors that are uh, available or that will come out when you run it, and then just some of the deep freeze. Some of its options. Options. So, ultimately, we're going to just basically go out and uh, in this. It does matter what uh, architecture you're on. So, I've got a uh, thawed state and or uh, a, a thawed state for both 62 and 32 bit. So, there's that 62 again. 62, man. 62 bit. I have a channeling That's a number Shane. I haven't heard from a, for a long time. That was a 62 bit. That was a way back in the day, Shane and I. Yeah. Anyway, so again, you're going to want to use your password here. And again, this is going to be, you know, just make it's sure you use the password. console password that you set up in your config to do that. And then basically all we're saying is that the next reboot thought. So you want to obviously reboot it. And I just nested a couple of packages in here. And yeah, I want if you've done anything with Deep Freeze, if you try to install programs, even though you mean well, Deep Freeze clears your changes for you. Good point. And then when you're done, it'll uh, boot the computer in a frozen state this time and then reboot it again. So at that point, you've thought it, done your installs, and then frozen it. And now, if you do an automated update or the auto updates, so you'll want to do a pre and a post, which would be the thought, yeah. do the automated updates, and then the post on that. So Yeah, so that's another way that you could manage your Windows Update computers. You could take the package we offer in the package library, thaw it, mm -hmm. do your work, and then freeze when you're done. I like it. Presumably it shouldn't go to sleep. It doesn't usually go to sleep in the middle of deployments. Hmm. Okay. That's what I've noticed anyway. So there's how you can use that and deploy an inventory. New idea. And then uh, you wanted, what do you want to go from there? I'll check on the state. Do we have any more questions that we need? Dear Lex and Katie, do the freezed clients need to be on the same network as the enterprise console or just connected to the internet? Sincerely, Stefan H. I have had great luck on the internet or on the same network rather than on the internet, if I say the words in the right order. I so haven't ever tried them over the internet. There's an option in your uh, config where you can pick wide area network. Yeah, let's move over to this one. So on the machine that has Deep Freeze installed, I think this is our frozen machine, you can hit Control-Alt-Shift-F6 for the longest keyboard shortcut, shortcut to pop this open. <laughs> Took me a long time to memorize just, that one back Just the mash the keyboard until just something happens. Until something happens. <laughs> Type your password right and it'll show you all of the settings. <laughs> oh yeah, he's thawed, so. There is an option to go over the WAN and provide an IP address. I think it would be... For the console. Yeah. So Fascinating to see whether that would work. And we haven't tried it here yet, but I think... I don't it, have... Uh, I don't have any I'd experience it doing it, it either, but, but... Looks like you can try it. I would... It certainly looks like it'll work. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, it looks like uh, Mike Ray just said, instead of the Control-Alt-Shift F6, you can Shift and then double-click on the Deep Freeze tray icon. Oh. Sweet. So if you're not running in stealth mode... Yeah. Nice. Okay. I'm fascinated by that. I love that. I love that a lot. Okay, so at this point, we've got... This is thawed, so we could do installs. He's thawed. Okay. So you can, you can manage them from the console if you're out and about and don't feel like connecting to your console machine. Can't do two things at once, apparently. You can boot Frozen and then reboot the machine really hard. So you either have to remote in to do that or? Do it from the target machine. The target machine, manually, okay. If you happen to be out. Now does the uh, does the deep freeze console let you change those states from here? Yep. So how would you do that? So we've got Drunk Rick just went down for a reboot. Evil Rick, if we want to thaw him, we would go to reboot thawed 
and okay. it'll change his state. He'll go immediately down for a reboot. So basically, anytime you change the state from thawed to frozen, it has to reboot? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely has to. Okay. And so, once again, unless I am thawed, everything I do the second it reboots is going to be just ignored, yep. wiped out, and it's going to go back to the original state. Yep. Okay. My favorite uh, function while I was working on the lab computers was to lock the machine and then disable the mouse and keyboard so I could set something up to go leave the machine and whatever it was doing and then nobody can do anything until you at the console machine on the server tell it to unlock. Okay. So fascinating to watch patrons walk up to a computer and try to use it. But, <laughs> so yeah. okay so did you just sit there and just mess with the end users? I mean I, I would. No I wasn't ever that rude I just would leave it that way and then wait a little so while. I, I don't them. like the way you walk. I'm going to lock your computer. <laughs> it's like, looking at stuff you're not supposed to look at? Well, everybody's going to see where you're looking at now. Okay, so um, what? Um, any other caveats we need to know about, like, uh, deep freeze? Are we going to have any trouble with, uh, you mentioned Windows 10. Now, Windows if, 10. if uh, you had the wrong version, like 8.3, you didn't have 8.3.5, and you happen to start, you know, Using deep you freeze old, with that. You've inherited an old deep freeze environment. Yeah. It's old, old. So what happens if you start doing stuff on the Windows 10 machines? Are you going to blue screen or are you going to... Yeah, they have, a, they have a pretty long list, but the list included random blue screens. Or after you reboot, it goes into the little sad face mm -hmm. recovery screen asking what do you want to do. And it would take two or three reboots to hopefully recover from that. It never really horked a machine, but okay, it sure so was obnoxious. Okay, so you could be in like a reboot loop for a little bit. For a little bit. Hmm. JJ, we have any other questions? Sure, let's take one. Dear Lex and Katie, we currently use VMware linked clones with persistent disks to retain user profiles during recompositions. Is there an analogous option with Deep Freeze? Thank you. In advance, Kathleen F. I'm not sure what she means by analogous, do you? Um, so retaining I similar? Yeah, I guess here if you're retaining retaining profiles. I don't think Deep Freeze does that. Deep Freeze just puts your machine back to the state prior. You've got some options to create thaw spaces. Well, I guess you could save it in thaw so space. So you could, um, I mean, you wouldn't want to uh, leave the whole C drive out, but you might create a thaw space. Let's see, we'll give it W, 10 gigs, and make it visible. So if we add this, this will give to the Deep Freeze computers a W drive that has 10 gig of space available and it just cordons that out on the C drive and then makes it available. So anything you save there would be good. I have noticed uh, the group policy settings for hidden drives. That may help your users. Mm -hmm. But but profile-wise, I mean... I don't know. I'd, maybe you want to do a I roaming don't think you can profile get specific so every time it loads it'd load it. But I mean, when you log in, you load your profile. But I don't think yeah. there's anything that I've seen that, you know, you can path it out and say these profiles stay. I haven't been. It'd be interesting <coughs> to see what you can do with group policy. Yeah, there's a, there's a question for anybody out there that uh, has tried to do that deep freeze. I'm not okay. sure. So you got another question, JJ? Dear Lex and Katie, will deep freeze be added to the package repositories in PDQ? Having a browse to your seed prompt script added would be handy. Also, sincerely, Davey J. Hey. David J. That would be pretty handy. I don't know how we'd build that package as of yet. I think we'd probably have customize. to get a hold of Deep Freeze and find out if it's okay to do that too. So that too. Um, we can't offer it if they don't want us. Yeah, to don't know, guys. Uh, that we can look into it, but I can't promise anything. I mean, Chris, what are your thoughts? Uh, Shane actually chimed in the chat and oh. with one word, no. Oh. But it's essentially what, what you said, Lex. It's it, unless we have permission to distribute it, it's it's not a free product. Yeah. So we cannot. So yeah. no, but we maybe we can make a video to show you how to do it, build it yourself. Maybe we do that. Yeah, it'd be definitely. Maybe we'll do that one after the webcast one of these days. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, do we have anything else to cover in, in regards to deep freeze? I don't know where I'm at if nobody has any more questions. No, I think we're good, guys. So um, appreciate you guys watching. Um, hey, the first Tech Tuesday ever. Uh, thanks, Katie and. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch y'all later. Bye-bye.
Thanks for joining us for Tech Tuesday. Remember, it's going to happen every third Tuesday of the month. Want to congratulate Valerie B. and Stefan H., winners of our very special limited edition PDQ Rockets. Send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. We'll get these out to you as soon as we can. And please remember to join us this Thursday for PDQ&A. Looking forward to that one. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here on Thursday.